Hi again, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act Two. As you can see, Art and I are with the master maven of movies, Manny huh. Pacheco. Too much alliteration. Wait, What's going Ma on? Manny ma movie maven. Manny the movie maven. Uh, boy, I put, wow. you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do you a big uh, favor. Well, what we used to say in the last century, a solid. I'm gonna forget that we ever did that. So, uh, Manny Pacheco, forgotten Hollywood. How soon do we forget? Speaking of which, you know, the most of forgotten Hollywood is the well, all of it in the 20th century. It's forgotten, <laughs> right? But but there are a lot of things that. We're, we're like 25 years into the 21st century, and I bet there's a lot of stuff that's been forgotten already. Well, there's definitely a number that's, of classics to be, true. that is to say, right. underrated films that are that are destined to become really big classics. You know, back in the 20th century, when they released It's a Wonderful Life, everybody was talking about the best years of our lives. They weren't talking about It's a Wonderful Life, and it became a classic once it ended up on TV. Same thing with... Um, with The Wizard of Oz. It really wasn't considered a classic film when everyone was talking about Gone with the Wind. Uh, Casablanca was just another film on the schedule. Ingrid Bourbon was looking ahead to For Whom the Bell Tolls. Paul Henry couldn't get off this film fast enough. And Humphrey wow. Bogart didn't like Ingrid Bergman. So, you know, it was it was just an okay film. Yeah. But, but, you know, you never know what's going to end up becoming a classic. And I believe that there's at least five films of the last 25 years that are destined destined in about fifty years to be looked back on and saying, "Wow, oh, really? Mm. Great films, yeah." I'm, I'm I want to hear what those wait, films are. Wait, it sounds like a, you're writing a new book called "The Forgotten Twenty First Century Films." <laughs> wow, we're, we're living in, in Forgotten Town, Forgotten Town, whatever. Well, I would think at the top of the list, and it's probably the best known of the of the bunch, and and probably the ultimate rom com, as as Art likes to call it, the rom com. I think that this is the premier rom com of so far of the of the twenty first century, and that is Sideways, that wonderful film with oh. Paul Giamatti about wine drinking, and uh, it, it is such. The the parallels between drinking wine and the kinds of wine and life, metaphorically, it is so well written. In fact, it won an Oscar for best writing, and uh, the the cast is is solid. Sandra O, oh, uh, Thomas Hayden Church, Virginia Madsen, and of course, anchored by the wonderful character actor deluxe Paul Giamatti. Yeah. What a gr I could watch that film five times in one day. That's how good it is. Can you watch? Can you watch it without a glass of wine in your hands? No, oh. I gotta have the glass of wine. And, you probably, and probably no Pinot this. Noir either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I dare our audience to disagree with me. I think already people are considering a classic. I think within twenty-five years, it's going to be one of the hallmark all-time great films of the twenty-first century. I'm not sure I'd agree, but it's a good film. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, but then again, but, but but then again, we're not Manny the Maven. That's true. That's true. Now you yeah. mentioned five. Yeah, the second film I consider probably the best neo noir film since uh, L.A. Confidential back in the '90s, and of course Chinatown back in the uh, back in the '70s. I think that for this century so far, that neo noir film a film that's fabulous is uh, Bad Times at the El Royale. Oh. Just a great, great film that's well written. Uh, anchored by Jeff Bridges, who I think has gotten better as he's gotten older. I think his work today, Hell or High Water, comes to mind on television, The Old Guy. He, his work has just gotten so much better than his work in the 70s and 80s. I think he's, yeah. just, he's just great. And yeah. it's just a wonderful neo-noir kind of film. And uh, Cynthia Erivo is in it as well. I didn't know that she could act so well, but she's really quite a good little actress, uh, and she can sing. That woman can sing. I saw her in concert at, at the Hollywood Bowl. Fine, fine singer. And she gets to sing and lots of 60s kind of music. So you're hearing all this great 60s soul. Yeah. It, a dark film, a lot of neo-noir. I just happen to love this film. Yeah, hmm. yeah. And you, number three. Well, did, did, did you like that film, by the way? Or is that just like, again? Yeah, it's okay. Hmm. I, I'm, you know, I, you, I, I'm kind of one-on-one -on -one here. Okay. Right. <laughs> 
let me just tell you, you you can disagree with me. That's okay. That's no, no, we, we 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 don't want to look stupid. Well, I <laughs> I would tell you my rom com. What came to my mind when you said classic rom coms? It was things like You've Got Mail. Well, that's that, but that's in the last, that's last century, right? But the, that's not this century. Twenty first century. century. Yeah, yeah. I mean, last century. Yeah, you, you got mail's great. It's fun, but it's but but it's ba it's it's a it's a remake on Good the point. shop around the corner, which was better. Right. So yeah. I mean, you know, so there you go. But All yes, right. yeah, but you point. got the right. All right, I stand right. corrected. Number three, but you got the right attitude. I mean, you're you're right on the money as far as where we're headed. Now, the third film, I think, is where films are headed anyway. I think films are becoming more global. So in the case of this film, yeah, it, it, uh, much of the film is subtitled, but a lot of it's in English as well. And it's a beautiful piece, especially the first half of the piece. Very sad piece. And then it, it becomes a real drama um, that's not as sad in the second half, which is in English. And that is Lion. Uh, Lion is one of those just all-time... I mean, I've seen it maybe five times, and I have yet to not cry at the end. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's uh, about this little Indian boy who gets lost on a train. Yes. And then and, and everything takes place in India with the the, the dialect of the of the country. And yes. then when she gets adopted by Nicole Kidman, everything turns English. And then they use this really wonderful device in in, in developing the uh, search for his homeland through GPS technology, which makes it a modern film. Yes. And so I, there's so much to like about Lion, but it's so heart-wrenching. I I, I took I took my brother in law who doesn't cry at anything anything I mean he yeah. is stone uh, he teared up at the end of this movie all right I mm -hmm. I'm a hundred percent with you on yeah, that one I'm with that, you on that, that. okay that that's, this is, is good all the hallmarks of a classic oh don't yeah. say hallmark don't say hallmark yeah don't say hallmark <laughs> it's not a hallmark film right. but it has the hallmarks yeah ah yeah. Classic. now you know what's really big. At the last half of the, actually since the 1970s, are political thrillers. Mm. Political thrillers are always good. Yeah. You know, everything from yeah. Three Days of the Condor. The yeah, but they're very dated. Yeah, yeah, those were. Yeah, those All the President's good. Men. Those all great. the President's Men, yeah. real good. Yeah, they're dated. Yeah. You're right, John. They're dated. So for the 21st century, I pick Ryan Gosling and the Ides of March. It is, Ooh. again, Paul Giamatti's in this one as well. Yeah. Um, and I mean, just this uh, 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 Marissa Tomei is in this. Yeah. It is a yes. really modern political thriller that I believe is just dandy to watch. I mean, the way they 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 kind of tangle the, the the idea of fooling around with an intern. They kind of have the references to Bill Clinton. Yeah. Uh, a George Clooney plays the the man running for office. It's it's really really a well written taut thriller. I love the Ides of March. That's you're, you're right, John. You don't want a dated thriller. You want something that's going to yeah. hold up. And and I think the Ides of March is going to hold up. I think so too. Wait, wait. What no, about what about a night? How about something in the action genre? Is there anything there? Well, you're not going to get that from me. But anyway. <laughs> wow. I, I save I save the best for last. Okay. Virtually nobody has ever seen this film. Virtually. Anybody who has seen the film considers it an instant classic. The actors in the film are going to surprise you. One of the actors actually got nominated for an Oscar, considering that nobody saw the film. That was quite a feat. And um, when it finally aired on cable, they didn't put it like on HBO or Showtime or any of the cable networks. It didn't even stream first. When it, this is such a well-done movie that the first time it aired on any kind of television or cable show, it aired on PBS. Mm. Wow. That's how good this movie is. What tell me, tell me, tell me, what is it? Hey, then you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna give me this look. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey, wait, wait, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Drum roll so we can get a look. <laughs> yeah. The name of the movie is Get Low. Get low. Huh? Yeah, there's a look. I got the look. Wow. I got the, yeah, I, I got the look. Get what low. have I told you that the stars were Robert Duvall, Sissy Spacek, mm. and Bill Murray? Wow. It is an absolute treasure of a film. But you it's said PBS. PBS. 
Well, they played it on PBS. I think they're playing it in other places. Give, give now, it, what, what, what's the name again? Get Low. It came out in 2013. Robert Duvall is absolutely, it might be his best work ever, ever. Wow. And that's saying a lot for, for, for me to say about that about Robert Duvall. A Sissy Spacek, really brilliant in this. And, and Bill Murray, who usually likes to play over the top, he yeah. is actually understated in this film, and that makes him really, really good. Yeah. yeah. It, it's a mystery. It's kind of an adventure. It's a little bit of a comedy, and it's a whodunit. I'm telling you, it's a lot of things, but I guarantee you after you watch this film, you'll say, wow, how did this fly under the radar? Yeah. Get, get low. Get low. Yeah, he's writing uh, it down. I like that. You're writing it down. <laughs> I am. I'm writing it down. Get low, uh, 2013. Yeah. And Bill Murray and... Sissy Spacek. But the real star of the whole thing, Robert Duvall, is absolutely brilliant in this movie. Hmm. Really, Robert brilliant. Duvall. Yeah, yeah, and it takes place in the 1930s, so it's it's kind of like a, like you know, kind of an older kind of feel to it. Sure, it, it kind of has a hillbilly feel to it. It yeah. is, it is really good. Wow. And I guarantee you, when, by to, to me, this is by definition an automatic forgotten Hollywood classic. So, so yeah. let's see what well, we've just done here. What we've just done here is we're barely a quarter of the way into the 21st century, and Manny Pacheco has already deemed five movies of this century to be yeah. likely classics 50 years from now, when we look back. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. And, and I think, you know, you can't predict the future, but if I'm if I'm right, three out of five or four out of five, I think I'm doing well. But I think I I think I knocked it out of the park with five out of five. Yeah. And wow. I, by the way, I have to tell you that this is another reason why we should live another fifty years. Okay, <laughs> because celebrating Act Two is dedicated to people living longer, healthier lives. Right. And I want to be well, there to congratulate you, Manny, <laughs> and to say that I was there on the day that Manny boldly <laughs> predicted the five of the classics of the 21st century when we were still damp, damp, hanging on the line. Wow. From your lips to God's ears. Now, I want you to know something. How serious I take this is I didn't say anything funny about, what do you mean? There's no Roger Corman in there? Okay. No. <laughs> As he sneaks I don't think he's the actually movie. made anything of the 21st century. Well, Manny, I, I definitely think you got three out of five. There's no question there. And I know that I'm going to get you to watch Get Low now, so I'm pretty excited yes, about yes, that. Yes, yes. Me too. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thanks, thanks, guys. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.